Kara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. So today we're going to do something fun. We're going to be looking at how to make fold out pages. And this is one I did yesterday. Um, and, and I wanted to show you that it's a little messed up. This is a little higher than that, but that's okay because we want it to be smaller than the page. So all I'll do is I'll go in and I'll cut off the top of this and then that will be perfectly sized to go in there. Now, I have taken a bunch of signatures out of this book, right? And so functionally, all I did was add double pages back in, so that will not take up too much room. Now, if you're gonna be making a lot of flip outs, you need to make sure that you alternate them. So if I'm gonna make a little, I have these really cute, I have this lady, giant lady and a little man, and I wanna like have her yelling at him. And I was thinking maybe I'd do a little up, up flip to hide them so that they're not always there, but you can peek at them. Um, so if I was gonna do that on the top, I would wanna make a bottom, say, pocket or something like that somewhere around in the book so that you don't have like these weird, if you did all pockets and nothing at the top, you would have this weird fat on the bottom book and then nothing up here. So it's really good to be able to do little flips here and there. And then all these little papers up here are everywhere I have a signature. And this is, this is super important. If you're gonna be gluing two pages together, which we're gonna do, so let's do it on this one. This is a medical, um, really cool medical book. I got a whole um, set of these, and so I've just been ripping them up like a mad woman. But the one thing to remember is it seems tempting to, to glue these two pages together, right? Because they're part of that signature. But just, just remember that, that these two are hooked to each other. If you were to tear them out, um, they'll tear out together. So you never want to glue those two together. You would glue these two together, right? Because this one is hooked to this one and this one is hooked to this one. So if you glue these two together, you're gonna have a way stronger page. And I would, um, so today I'm gonna be doing another flip out. Let's see, I'll probably do it on this side because um, I just did one on that side. So I don't want everything to be the same way because when, when you, and I found this, when you do all the things in your book or in your junk journal or whatever, you kind of get into a habit and you do everything the same way, then all of a sudden you have really um, tippy. That's all I can think of to say, is you have really um, weird books that have weird crinkles and bumps and things like that because everything is happening in the same area. So I will um, go ahead and glue these together. I'm using Mod Podge, um, which I use for 90% of what I do. I also um, have tacky glue here, doo, 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 tacky glue, um, that I'm going to use for some of the hinges. So let's just do this. And my first inclination when I started doing this was to, um, I want to get something to put here so I can glue off the page because you want to get all the way off the page, right? Um, you want to stick all these together. My first inclination when I started doing this was to really dig down into that binding and really glue them together at the binding. But then what it does is it makes this weird, um, I don't know why it does it. It makes this weird little lip on the pages and, uh, I've done a bunch of these, and so I, I promise you, if you do all of the page, and you could do this with glue and just spread it around. You could do it with, um, you know, anything. You could use your Fabri-Tac. You could use anything on this. Um, just functionally, you want to do all this. And, and I would say, if you're going to use Elmer's glue or something like that, you'll have less of a... Of a the Mod Podge does make it a little bit wrinkly, and I don't always worry about little bumps in it. Um, and so then you're going to flip this over, 
and just flatten it out. And these are old pages. These are, these are like a little bit of the glue is going through it because they're so old. Um, and so that's why I need to reinforce them. If you have a really strong page book, then you might not have to do that. And then you would smoosh it down. Now, because my, my, I have so many pages taken out, smooshing it down doesn't do as much as it would. And so now we have, you know, two pages stuck together. And then we would do um, the, I already have one. This is two pages. I'm gonna show you how to glue these pages together because I was nervous about gluing pages together at first. And you can see this hardly got wrinkly at all. Um, but then I would attach this here and then fold it in like that, or I could attach it at the top and fold it down here. And um, you may think, oh, well, you know, let's set this aside and and uh, come back in a, in a while. But I don't always do that because <laughs> I like to do stuff and I'm kind of, uh, we'll give it a minute to dry. It doesn't, it doesn't take very long to dry. I mean, it takes forever to dry completely because I live in Florida and it's a super humid climate. But it doesn't really take that long to dry in most places. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do two pages together. Now, when I ripped out, and this is, th these are pages from that book. So that makes it so much easier because I don't have to worry about cutting down pages. I can use these really cool edges that are already kind of dark. And when you see this little ratty edge, so first off, I would never be upset that there's a little ratty edge to begin with because I, um, I like ratty edges, but if you were upset about it, don't forget you have to make the, the page smaller. So if you, if you weren't doing a vintage journal, if you were doing a regular junk journal or, or a regular altered book, you could just take your paper cutter and cut a straight line down that and you wouldn't even notice. And you need that, you need that to take part of it off anyways. So that's good. So now we're just going to paint these pages together and, and I tend to put, at first I was thinking I would, you know, keep them stiffer by putting the ratty edges opposite each other, um, or flipping them over so they're opposite, but, but then I realized I cut all that off anyway, so it's no big deal. All right, let's straighten all this out for you OCD people. And we're just going to paint this entire page. Yeah, missed a corner up there. It's super important to do the whole page. I know that that some people, especially when you're doing um, pockets and things like that, you can do, um, you know, just around the edges, you kind of almost don't want the whole page done. But what we want to do, what we're actually doing with this is we are um, keeping the integrity of the pages because I'm going to put stuff on them. I may put you know, some envelopes for storage, or I may put um, some additional papers and do some collage, but something's going to be happening on this page. I don't have just blank pages in my books. So it is going to be a thing. Now, this is the coolest thing because when I first started, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to set it down perfectly like some of the things you do. But this, you don't have to do that because you can move these pages around quite a bit for a little while until you get them straight. Okay, so that's pretty straight. We want to go around and everywhere we can, straighten them out, straighten them out, straighten them out. Okay, so it's slightly crooked. Um, you can see... Let's see right there you can see it's a little bit crooked and if you and if it really matters to you you could I would try to put them closer together when they start but I'm gonna take this part off I'm probably gonna take a little bit off the top and the bottom anyways because you, you know I do a lot of um, lace trims at the top I do a lot of things so functionally all this needs to do is just be a really kind of 
more stable page. Now you could absolutely, if you don't, if you're not making an altered book, if you're just doing a junk journal, you could absolutely use a pick. Uh, this is about the um, weight of a piece, piece of scrapbook paper. So you could totally skip this step and not have to do um, the, the gluing together. And this is really cool. I figured this out afterwards. If you want to hide your hinges, okay, so, so we're going to make hinges. Let's go back. We're going to make hinges today like this that are on the outside with washi tape or with a little bit of fabric. You're going to see those hinges. Now, I may cover them up with all kinds of stuff, but you can physically see them. If you want to hide your hinges, you could just, as you're gluing your pages together... Put your glue over here, right? Put your tape inside before you put your second page on. And I would do this part first, the, the gluing the pages together. And you can't hide it if you're using scrapbook paper, obviously, but if you're using book pages, so you put your glue on, put your tape on, and do this, and then you don't even have to re-glue the tape or anything like that. And then you would do the same thing on your book pages. You would put the glue on, put the tape inside with this attached to it, and you would have a hidden um, hinge. I like the look of the hinges, but you may not be so artsy craftsy as I am. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what you can make hinges from. We have a bunch of different stuff we can make hinges from. Um, so washi tape is amazing. And it's really perfect for this because it's a lightweight tape. Um, it's, it's, if you were to use duct tape, it would, the hinge would be really hard to move, right? It would be really hard to flip your book over. But washi tape is really good for this. Now that having been said, washi tape isn't meant to hold things together. So whenever I use the washi tape, I absolutely Put glue, and I'll show you how we're going to do this in just a minute when we attach that page. Um, I'll use the washi tape so that you can see that. Another thing that I've used for hinges is fabric, and this is really cool. I like the look of it very much. Um, and and functionally, what you need is just it to be um, pliable, and then you would, and I'll show you how you do this. But you would um, put put glue on the outside, glue on the outside, and then leave the middle open so that you don't, um, on fabric it isn't as bad, on washi tape it's terrible, um, but that make, that's what makes the hinge pliable to be able to open it and close it. And you could use masking tape. I didn't have any masking tape or I would show you that. And then one thing that's really cool too is this, um, I was thinking we may try this because I haven't tried this yet. I just found this. My husband and son went away to lacrosse camp and they forgot his athletic tape. So this is tape that you use um, when you get, uh, like you have a problem with your knee or you have a finger that's broken, something like that. That's uh, tape like that. And I love how it's almost like tape that's made out of fabric. So I thought that would be fun to try today. So maybe we'll use that. Okay, so let's get started. This is not quite dry, considering we Mod Podged it two and a half minutes ago. That's a shocker, right? Okay, yeah, all right, there you go. And I am gonna use a dry piece of paper. I had that page already um, done from yesterday, so that'll help. It might even help straighten this guy out a little bit because that's one thing that happens is they they have a, a trouble staying straight. So this guy will help this guy. All right, now one last thing we need is something to prop this up because what's gonna happen is if I do it this way, and I've, like I said, I've done a bunch of these. If I do it this way and I, and I kind of leave this, uh, it's slid down the glue occasionally. And I really don't like that. So you can use absolutely anything to just get it up a little bit. It's not actually holding it up. It's just um, it's just keeping it from falling 
at that really precipitous angle. And, and since I was doing the front of the book before, it was a really, it was quite a big angle. So I think we can use this, um, this fabric to do it. Okay, so now we wanna see how long our thing is. And some of you may not have a um, a vintage book, in which case it would really annoy you that there's googies on the tape, but um, I like that there's, there's already dirt on the tape. And it's not very sticky. This, this to me feels like um, a little bit like masking tape in that, uh, or like washi tape in that it, it has a, <laughs> Like it's slightly sticky, but it would not hold these two pages together over the long run. All right, so now we're gonna get our tacky and we need to see how far out it's gonna go. So it's gonna go to the L. So it goes quite a bit out, right? Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is put, we wanna get it really stuck at the top and we wanna go out to the L Oh, we got a glop. We don't want a glop. A glop will smoosh out. So we want to we want to have glue, but we don't want to have a ton of glue. So we're going to go like that. We're going to eyeball this. Perfect, okay. Yep, see we got glue oogs. That's okay. Glue oogs are fine. You can't do this wrong, right? Um, you don't need to be nervous about this at all. You really can't screw this up. I was completely nervous about this. I thought, oh my gosh, I am gonna mess this up and you know, the top's gonna be too high, the bottom's gonna be too high, the hinges won't work, nothing will work. Um, and then come to find out this was maybe the easiest thing that I have ever done. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here. We know about how wide it is. Let's take a peek. Because don't forget, we need to have a little bit, so if this is the edge of the page, you can just see underneath there. We need to have, you know, an eighth of an inch so that the, the stuff can fold, so that the pages can fold. All right, so we're gonna put some glue on here now. And don't forget, you can always come back in later if you need to add a little bit more glue here or there. Make sure you get it really close to the edge here. If you're not like me and you don't want ratty pages, then you, um, you would maybe leave this on the outside instead of having that be underneath your hinge spot. And I have my, there's a signature there, paper. All right, so now we're gonna try to line this up and we're gonna move this over here. Do, 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 so we can see it better. And we're gonna put this on here. And we can even kind of eyeball it a little bit. I don't wanna wiggle the camera too much. But we wanna make sure before we do anything else that we have this sort of lined up with a gap between the pages. And that's pretty good. Let's get that a little straighter. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, so that's gonna be amazing. Okay, and then we can flip this in for right now and really smoosh that down. We got glue, goo glue goobers. And we can push this tape over a little bit. You have a lot of flexibility with this because you're using flexible tape and because you're using glue and pages and things like that. There is a lot of room for error. Um, you know, if if we find out that this isn't equid equidistant, I can just cut the pages and nobody is going to know. That's the thing that you need to remember is as we do this, we know all the little mistakes that we've made in our books, but but nobody will remember that. Now, I know that some of you gals really care 
and you're probably having a nervous breakdown right now, but to me, that just doesn't matter at all. So now, see, there you go. And now I have a hinge. And if I wanted it to be a hidden hinge, I could, and if I was gonna use this tape again, I have to see how it dies. I've never used it, so I think it could be totally fun if it will die um, with, uh, you know, distress ink or something like that. If I can like really grunge it up, that'll be fun. Considering it already had dirt on it, I feel like it should probably take dye pretty well. Um, and also, it, so so my other one with the washi tape, the tape was much straighter. If you look at this, the tape isn't very straight, and that's fine. I'm trying to work around the uh, the camera tripod and all kinds of stuff, so I'm just not that concerned about it. If I wanted to, um, if it really bothered me, I'll show you this real quick. If it really bothered me and I couldn't stand it, what I've started doing with some of my ruffly lace, this is kind of cool, is this lace has a little bit of stuff underneath it. I could just cover that whole edge of the page up with this uh, this kind of ruffly lace and then put the, the pockets on. I have to have two journals going at all times because now I can't do anything with this until the glue dries um, because this part you do have to do. And then what I'll go back and do is the very last step is, um, I guess we could do that now. I don't know if you can see this. Let's come over here and move this a little bit more. Um, so the last thing you're gonna do is come in here and you're gonna, this is the easy part. You don't have to make that sound when you glue, but I probably do make that in my head. Okay, and we're gonna get a piece as long. I always go longer. Like, I'm not trying to match any of this up as I go. Um, usually I just cut those across. And then we're gonna put this it's like binding a book, right? You want to do the front and the back. Okay, I want it to be about, this one will have straight, right? Okay, so that's super straight. And then we'll do this. And then we'll try to smush our glue a little flatter. Boy, you can see the glue through this one. Um, if you use Mod Podge, which I've used in the past, um, because you can can um, do it on. But I would be willing to bet that it, with this cloth tape, that glue is gonna soak up and you won't even notice it when you're done. But see, we still have our flippiness. We still have everything going on. And now we definitely want to put something underneath there. So if the glue comes out of the bottom of the bottom one, we don't um, accidentally glue our pages together underneath. So we'll put this over here where no glue can touch it. And that's perfect, and we'll just leave it sit like that. So hopefully that helps with how to do your flip out pages. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.